Thanks for joining me here on Tropical Weather Impact. It is Tuesday, July 29th. I'm meteorologist Pete Malone here in New Orleans. We are counting down the final days of July heading into August soon. Tropics still fairly inactive for the Atlantic Basin, but we've got a major outbreak of systems over in the Pacific, the Eastern and the Central Pacific. In fact, we have a major hurricane sitting south of Hawaii this morning. We're going to talk about that and where it is headed coming up in tropical weather impact. And we're going to talk about the Atlantic when it may wake up. If you do watch long term models, you've probably noticed here in the next week and a half to two and a half weeks or so models have been perking up, showing uh, at least the potential for storms all over the map. We'll talk about how valid those are and if there's any truth to them as we head into the month of August. But here's where we stand right now. The Atlantic Basin, we've got tropical waves lined up, but they're very, very anemic. Not much happening out there, but look at the Atlantic or the Pacific. We've got two invests that are trying to form and we've got two named storms out in the central Pacific here. And the major one is just been astonishing. This is uh, Iana that's sitting south of Hawaii. Now it's sitting south of Hawaii by hundreds and like over 500 miles. So it is absolutely no threat to the islands here, but it shows you, I mean, just how incredible this hurricane is that is traveling due west. And this is what the, you want to see with the major hurricane out in the middle of nowhere impacting absolutely no land. But a closer look at it satellite this morning showing they have it as a category three. I'm almost certain this thing is stronger than a category three as this thing has um, you can see these white colors showing the tops of the clouds becoming very cold. You get a symmetric look to this. This is a classic uh, stronger hurricane category four. And in some instances, these can easily be category fives. Look how small the eye is. Oftentimes with these tiny little systems, they can ramp up quickly. And this thing went from a barely a hurricane to about as strong as a hurricane can get right now. And so just an incredible storm that's passing well south of Hawaii. You can see it's over 790 miles southeast of Honolulu moving west at about 15 miles an hour or so. Again, these winds were clocked at 4 a.m. this morning central time. I do think the hurricane is probably stronger than what's being depicted there with that earlier advisory. So shows you how things can change very quickly out in the tropics. Here's the official track heading due west. It is going to stay quite strong over the next day or two, and then it eventually starts to weaken. It'll move into wind shear and eventually start to get torn apart. There's also another system behind it that is struggling and it's probably not going to do much. Uh, Iana is taking the main show right now. So that's what's happening in the Pacific. Uh, usually when the Pacific has big outbreaks like this, the Atlantic is going to be the complete opposite. Now what will be interesting is the environment that's currently over the Pacific may try to migrate closer to the Atlantic here. Does that mean the Atlantic wakes up? I think that's a big question right now and there is some uncertainty on how conducive the Atlantic is going to become over the next one to two weeks. This is why models are starting to wake up. Climatology is one of them, being that we're heading into August. And two, they are showing that maybe the environment over the Pacific is trying to travel more this way. And so that means we may actually see things wake up. Now we've got tropical waves lined up from the continent of Africa all the way to Central America. In fact, we have three separate tropical waves currently being depicted across the Caribbean. One of them doesn't have any rain with it. The others a bit more active, but moving inland and then out in the deep tropics. We've got two tropical waves that have rolled off the continent of Africa. The one or the two, this little broad feature in here is what is going to be our focus over probably the next week to even two weeks, specifically this area right in here. So what you've got going on here, you've got a couple tropical waves embedded in the monsoon trough or the intertropical convergence zone. Again, that's just where your trade winds are meeting. You get some circulation, you get enhanced showers and storms, and you get tropical waves pushing in with tropical moisture. All that working together, you're getting a healthy burst of showers and storms. Now this feature right here is the one that looks the healthiest at the moment. When you look at models though, they're not overly excited about this, and I think there's a couple reasons for that. One is it's got a lot of dry air ahead of it. That could be an inhibiting factor. Two, there is some wind shear. And three, water temperatures, the further north it get, they do, they're not cool by any stretch, but they're sitting in the low 80s and upper 70s right in here. And so models not overly excited. Now, just because models aren't excited doesn't mean you can't watch it. And so this is the one we're going to watch long term. If you've been checking out any of the models over the past couple of days, they show things remaining fairly inactive until the first and second week of August. And what they're doing here is they're taking this tropical wave, 
pushing it closer to the United States and then trying to wake it up essentially. So you have the ghost of it and then it wakes up closer to home. That can happen, so that's why these weren't watching. Now, let's start by saying this thing is so far out that it's hardly a concern for anybody. Just digging into the weeds of meteorology here, it's gonna be fascinating and interesting to watch to see how it evolves over the next week to a week and a half. And so when you look at our GFS and European model, these are the deterministic models. These are not the AI models. Uh, these show that, well, you've got a little bit of disturbed weather trying to break off. You can see they really don't ever develop it into much. They keep it unorganized, and then they kind of kill it off for a little bit with just some remnant moisture traveling near the islands. Now, this is a week from today, next Monday and Tuesday. You can see there what's left of that tropical wave could be somewhere in here, the GFS in red, the European in green, they don't show anything organized, but they show that remnant tropical wave just kind of hanging out near the Bahamas. I think that's when we will want to keep a closer eye on it. Now again, models are not overly aggressive with this developing, developing into anything, but with nothing else happening, this is going to be about the only thing that we're tracking here. Again, there is some dry hair ahead of this. There's the tropical wave. Notice some drier on the northern side. If it can create a little pocket of moisture, maybe it stays a bit more active. But as we head in towards next Tuesday, the tropical wave somewhere in here and you've also got an upper level low spinning, so some wind shear is still in it. The big question remains, what does it do beyond that? Does it remain weak and unorganized and fly into the Gulf and just bring a little extra moisture? Or does it try to begin to organize? And that's about a week to a week and a half from now. So a lot of uncertainty on how this could have evolved. Again, the stress level with it, there isn't any stress level with it. We're just watching this thing uh, as we go through the long term. Uh, long-term prospects of it. So I just again, I want to remind you kind of how we gauge these things, especially here on the northern Gulf. Whenever you have a feature this far out in the Atlantic, you're talking about it's at least eight to sometimes even 14 days away from ever even approaching the northern Gulf. Now, these boxes are really based for areas around the northern Gulf. Whenever you have something in the Caribbean, closer to the islands, we do start to keep a closer watch to it. And then whenever you have something a little bit closer to home, you're talking about something could impact you in days rather than weeks. And so we're standing about right here. Again, the Hurricane Center isn't even highlighting this. There's no big signal that it's going to blow up in anything soon, but that's the feature we're going to watch long, long term as we go through the next, uh, we'll say week to two weeks. Now, this tropical wave, it's going to be riding around a ridge of high pressure. That Bermuda high that uh, sits up over the Atlantic this time of year, it's what pushes these tropical waves. There's the area. Notice got some wind shear, stays stretched out, traveling under that ridge. And then as we get into next week, that ridge may try to strengthen. And that's why that tropical wave may try to push more this way rather than curve out to sea and never be a problem. So that's why we'll watch it long term. Again, that's one week from today. You've got an unorganized area of a little shower activity near the Bahamas. That's nothing too wild. Looking at the ingredients ahead of this thing, I think it's marginal at best the next few. We'll see how it, if it does anything as over the next few days, but you've got some wind shear. You've got some dry air probably keeping it in check as we go through the upcoming week and into the upcoming weekend. So where it stands right now, not a whole lot going on in the Atlantic. We're just watching some tropical waves, which we do all season long. We on average track, you know, 50, 60 tropical waves, depending on how busy the season is. And so a lot of tropical waves never do anything. They do what these tropical waves did. They fly across the Atlantic. Some don't even have rain with them. Other do have rain, but they're never able to organize. Sometimes these waves will even travel across Central America, move into the Pacific and try to form. And so that can happen too. But when you look back at these two waves, they are healthier. They've got a lot of moisture in them. They do have a lot of dry air on the north side, but a lot of moisture here closer to the waves itself and down towards the, the monsoon trough that uh, has kept all the uh, showers and storms fairly active down here. So that's what we're going to be watching as we go through the next week to a week to a week and a half. The rest of the country, we've been dealing with that big heat wave. Luckily, it's going to be decreasing in intensity. And I tell you what, if you want to find some cool air this weekend, you will be able to find it in a couple of spots across the country. I think we've got low 80s and even upper 70s for high temperatures uh, for a big portion of the eastern US. Look at New York on Sunday, 83. That's going to feel great compared to what you've had. Bigger temperature swings down here in Georgia and North and South Carolinas. There's a real possibility after some of the hottest days they've seen in a long time are struggling to get out of the 70s this weekend. We call this cold air damming. What does that mean? Well, you get cool air that slides down the edge of the Smokies and the 
um, the Appalachians here, and it gets dammed in these areas. It collects, and so that's why it's cooler in this zone. Sometimes it'll work its way further south, but in this case, I don't think it ever makes it down towards the Gulf Coast. And so New Orleans and surrounding areas here, we're going to stay warm and muggy with some showers. But if you want to get towards that cooler air, head up towards the north, Atlanta and beyond, and maybe you'll have a nicer weekend, getting you a little excited for fall. That's where we stand for today on your tropical weather impact on your Tuesday. We'll see you right back here tomorrow with any updates uh, as we track what's going on in the Pacific and in the Atlantic. Thanks for joining me.